In this video we're going to see how to configure MGCP to manage analog and digital interfaces on our router. Uh, I'm starting out at uh, Unified CM Administration. I'll go into Device and Gateway and I'll add a new gateway. For this lab I'm using the Cisco 2811 router. Click Next and I have to specify the protocol as MGCP. Next and then I have to fill in information about the gateway itself. The very first entry that I need to put in there is domain name. Now we got rid of domain names or DNS uh, earlier so we wouldn't have to do DNS lookups to make phone calls. Uh, so what do I put in this field? Well in this field I have to use the host name of the router. See I've got show IP domain name. Uh, the output of that particular show is, is blank so we're not doing any kind of DNS on the router. Uh, and what we're going to use is the router's host name. Very important that that is spelled exactly correctly. Uh, if it's not, then the router is not going to be able to get its configuration from the call manager server. The description uh, copies the, ho the uh, domain name um, automatically. I'm going to change that out. And then the call manager group. Then we have to tell the router uh, what's in slot 0 slot 1. Slot 0 by default is the NM4 VWIC motherboard. Slot 1 could be any one of the uh, different high density uh, voice modules. In my case I don't have any con uh, configured there. Uh, click Save and now it'll open up and ask me what's available in the subunits. If you're not familiar with the 2811 here's the back plane. This is from the chassis installation guide. Uh, there's slot 0 and here's slot 1. Slot 0 is divided up into four subslots or subunits and you can see the numbering there. HWIC 0, HWIC 1 over here, HWIC 2 and then HWIC 3. So that's how that NMVWIC 4 motherboard divides the uh, the back plane up. In my particular case, or in this case, at this point we have to tell it what kind of interface card is in each subunit uh, and you see there's quite a good range here and you have to be very careful to make sure that you get exactly the right card. There's a difference between the VWIC2 MFT T1 and the VWIC22 MFT T1E1 T1. Uh, you gotta know exactly what kind of cards you've got. In my particular case, subunit 1 has a VIC2 FXS and subunit 3 has a VIC, VWIC 1 MFT T1. So we'll save that. It'll come up and ask me for the configuration of each one of the individual ports 010 and 011 or port 0 and port 1 on subunit 1 on slot 0 and then the zero, port 0 which is the, the, the T1 uh, in uh, slot 3. So we'll configure the FXS interfaces first. The port type is a POTS port. We have to select a device pool. Uh, the rest of this can be left alone. I'll say save. And this is where I can add the directory number. Directory number is 1000. We can give it a description. POD 12 FXS1 and I'll just carry that down. Um, and for our purposes right now, that's all we've got to uh, that we've got to configure. So we'll save that, and that's been saved. And now we make sure that it's associated with this particular interface, analog line, slot zero, subunit one, port zero at pod twelve router. Uh, and here you see there's quite a bit more different things we could configure. Uh, we're not going to get into any of that right now. So we'll save that once more and now I will go back to the gateway and configure 011. In this case it's another FXS port so we'll quickly configure him and this will be directory number 1001 and pod, pod 12 FXS2 save that. 
and he's associated with analog line sub uh, slot zero subunit one port one on pod 12 router so we'll save that now I'll go back to the gateway once more and then we'll configure the VWIC MF VWIC 1 MFTT1 this particular case we're doing a digital access PRI and we have to go through and set up the device pool and then the rest of this in the first section you don't have to do anything with what you want to get down here to mess with is the interface specifics in this case the protocol type lots of different switches that are used in, in uh, ISDN in our case we're using a, the the national so uh, ISDN type is PRI NI2 uh, user side channel select order is bottom up on the user side normally I have a full full T1 uh, if I had a fractional I would want to use top down but I'm gonna leave it there um, everything else is okay here if I was using a fractional I would uh, fractional I would also do the enable status poll and then next the significant di digit component of this um, in the call routing inbound calls we have to select how many digits are important to us uh, for calls that come inbound uh, this is a raw setup we haven't done any kind of digit manipulation or anything like that so we want to say four digits are significant even though our whatever my service provider is sending which in this case should be 10 or 11 um, the only thing I'm really concerned with is the four digits that are being the last four digits that are being sent um, and that's all that I have to worry about on this particular screen I'll click Save uh, I should point out at the bottom of this screen here uh, gives us the capability to configure the uh, line coding and framing uh, this is the default and normally it's going to work in this particular in this particular scenario so I'm going to click uh, apply config say OK now you see the registration status is unknown just like it's unknown on the other endpoints here's pod 12 router if I see endpoints nothing is registered yet I've got the two analog lines and the digital line. So what I need to do now is go over to the router. And MGCP is very simple to configure at the router from the router. All I have to do is enter two commands. I'll go into config, CCM manager, config server, and the IP address of my call manager. That's not 168, 108. This is pod 12, 198 and then CCM manager config and you see immediately it grabbed this file and we'll see some stuff happen here as it starts to take over the interfaces and get them all set up everything goes down and comes back up again now to bring the controller back up and all the interfaces back up And there it is. Now we can look at a couple of things at the CLI to see the status here. Uh, show uh, CCM Manager gives us a brief look at our call manager. Uh, we see that MGCP, MGCP domain name is Pod12 Router. Uh, we are registered with our primary call manager, and that's his IP address. And that goes through and tells us about the um, the communications between this gateway and the call manager itself um, here the backhaul information MGCP backhauls Q931 the layer 3 ISDN information to the call manager uh, so it's telling us how we're doing how that connection is established uh, and show MGCP endpoints will show us from the endpoint will show us from the routers perspective all of the registered endpoints and you see it's going to give you every every one of the DS zeros as, as well as the analog lines so that's great and that's nifty we can't really make any outbound calls at this point because we haven't done any call routing but we should be able to get inbound calls what I'm going to do is run a debug ISDN Q931 and I'm going to take one of my PSTN phones and I'm going to call a number on pod 12
and there it rings and you see the inbound call the inbound call ISDN inbound call port 23 is the signaling channel obviously the calling party ID and there's the phone number of the calling party the called party check that out it's only four digits and that's it because I said significant digits is four and that's all I really am concerned with and there it goes and clears the channels and it was used in channel uh, 23 so um, that is configuring MGCP to manage analog and digital ports on the router